Hey guys, what's up? This is John Kakali, and today we're going to be graphing the Hennen map. So real quick, this graphic, it's not the Hennen map, but it's related to the Hennen map, mathematically speaking, and I thought it would be real cool, so that's what that is. Uh, a little bit about myself, I'm a senior, major in mechanical engineering, and I'm a little different than your average student. I'm 36 years old, and I live in New York City, and I'm taking these classes remotely, and I'm actually returning to school. Uh, long story surrounding the circumstances of that, would be happy to tell you, but I don't want to take up too much time talking about myself. So moving along, hope to do some graduate work in artificial intelligence uh, once I graduate. My hobbies and other interests, love playing basketball, really love cooking, and um, I love the art of storytelling. A few of you guys also mentioned that you are participants in Campus Crusades, so I just figured quickly I'd mention that I, I go to church and it's an important part of my life. But without further ado, what is a Hennen map and why should we care? Uh, mathematically speaking, it's defined by the following equations. There's something to point out here. Uh, alpha and beta are constants that define the stretching and the thickness of the map. And you also have these n terms, which are important because that means it's a step function. So that's very important in terms of the method we're going to use to, to actually graph and solve these equations. Uh, we're going to graph a special case of the Hennen map where alpha is 1.4 and beta is 0.3 and that's called the Hennen attractor which exhibits some really interesting behavior. So why is the Hennen map so important? It's one of the few two-dimensional plots that actually exhibits chaotic behavior. My understanding is that most 2D plots don't but this is one that does and so why that is important is because two dimensions are way easier to analyze than three dimensions. So this is a really great mathematical model if you want to study deterministic chaos. And a question to ask yourself as we go through this presentation is, does chaos have any patterns associated with it? Additional reading, great article about the Hennen map. I'll post that on, my, on the forum. So how do we graph it? Um, well, could we use a graphing calculator? And the answer, unfortunately, is no. That's a bad idea, specifically because those end terms really require a programming language to really do it right. So MATLAB is a great candidate, not only because it can handle those end terms really well, but also because the graph tools, as we're going to see, give us really great visualizations to, to analyze the data and make some great conclusions from it. So we have our equations here, and let's go ahead and set our initial conditions where n equals 1. Uh, and we're going to set those to x equals 1 and y equals 0. And all that really means is that um, when n equals 1, the y and x coordinates from the previous iteration are equal to zero, so, so all this stuff cancels out and you're left with this. So let's go ahead and look at the MATLAB code. So I was given this code and I went through and I commented it, and we're just going to break it down and go through it real quick. So uh, first off, we have this code right here and that close all clear vars and CLC, that clears your workspace. You want to do that every time you start a new MATLAB project. That, that cleans things up from the previous project that you've been working on. Uh, moving along, we're going to initialize, we're going to create two variables, x and y, and we're going to initialize them with this nan function. That stands for not a number. And what that does is that creates an array that we define here, uh, 100 by 1, and that sets all the values to a value called not a number. So that way we don't have the variables pointing to some leftover data. Another really great thing to do anytime you create a variable. So here we're going to go ahead and define our initial conditions that we spoke about. We're going to define our alpha and beta constants. And here we get to the real meat of the code, the for loop. Now you have your equations for the x and y coordinates here. And that is the exact same thing as, as here. This is just in computer code format. And what we're doing with this for loop is we're creating this variable ind1. And all this means right here, the 2 colon 100, is that we're going to start with that variable equal at two, to 2, and we're going to move it to, we're going to loop and add 1 to it every loop until we get to 100. Now we're going from 2 to 100 because we already have the 1 defined. So, and here you can see we use that IND1 to access the array right here in these numbers. Uh, and after we create our data set, we're going to go ahead and plot it. Now again, uh, it's worth noting when you use the plot function in MATLAB, all you have to do is just put the x and the y value into the plot function and MATLAB knows to put all 100 values that you get 
into the plot. So super efficient, really great way of doing so. All this is saying is that we're using periods to represent the data points. This is a three-dimensional plot where we're going to use the n values as the z-axis. You can kind of think of that as, as time. Think of it as, as n equals 1 to 100. That's like going from 1 to 100 seconds. So let's go ahead. Oh, and down here, we're just going to run it for 1,000 values instead of 100. Otherwise, it's the exact same code. So let's go ahead and run this stuff and see what we get. So we have a couple graphs. So these are the graphs where we use 100 data points. And as you can see, the points are very chaotic. It, it doesn't really show us a whole lot. But when we go down to this is the graph with 1,000 data points. And you can see we're starting to get uh, let's go ahead and max this out. We're starting to get more definition. So even though the points are chaotic, they begin to form this pattern of stretching and folding around this point right here. That point one, zero, that's our initial condition. And so the whole point of this exercise is that uh, the chaos stretches and folds around this initial condition. So it exhibits some really interesting behavior. And another thing, if we go back up and pop this three-dimensional plot out. Again, doesn't look like much at right, right now, but let's go ahead and rotate it. So here, along the bottom, these are the time values, and as time continues to move forward, it shows this oscillation pattern, uh, which has some repetition in it, um, and it really is very similar to some of the vibration functions we're looking at. So again, if we rotate it, you know, this way, that graph starts to converge into that graph. But if we look at it this way, you begin to see an oscillatory motion. So I thought that was really cool. Um, one more thing I'm going to show you. This is some code I added. And we're going to use a real quick MATLAB shortcut, Command T to uncomment everything. And we're going to go ahead and run it. And I wanted to show you what it looks like. I wanted to animate this. So look at this. Look at this animation. This is what happens over time. In the beginning, it's chaotic, but the chaos begins to, to fill it in over time. So I thought that that was cool and worth pointing out. And this is a, a three-dimensional plot that I created where instead of using lines, we're going to use X's. I need to, I need to pause this animation for a quick, real quick to get it to work. So we're going to pop this out. We're going to look at this and Again, check this out. Uh, again, when we look at it over time, it doesn't really show like it's going to be doing much. But check this out. Again, as we see how that converges into that. And that's really what it's doing in three dimensions. So I thought that that was really cool, too. So that's the analysis of the graphs. And uh, what can we infer from this? Uh, chaos actually does have a pattern, which was something really interesting. That's something I learned by doing this homework assignment. Uh, it's not totally random. Um, it seems like it's random, but it actually does stretch and fold around an, is an initial point. And as I did some research on chaos and looked up some articles about it, it, it sort of confirmed that, that theory. And we would not have been able to infer this without the use of, of MATLAB to visualize the data. As you can see, the graphing tools were excellent, and it really helped us. It really helped us visualize it. So it's it's worth your time to to learn how to use it. Um, and that's my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Um, my apologies if I went over by a couple minutes. Uh, I hope I hope I hope you guys uh, were able to take something away from it. Any questions, comments, concerns? send me an email right here. Uh, thank you so much and have a wonderful day.